Hello, it's Das Grigger, and welcome to another Gen 2 in review. I was inspired today to update my system because a friend decided to install Gen 2 on a system of his own, and I thought, ah, it's been a week or two, let's do an update. And I wanted to share something with you because I was looking at this thinking, ah, I've already done an update recently, one of these things. You guys don't need it. And then something blew up and I thought this would make a good video if I don't bore you first. <laughs> anyway, I did an Emerge Sync today and for me it is now the 19th but I did this on the evening of the 18th for me in my location and of course we did the sync and there were some new news articles as you can see here at the top of the screen that there was something about GCC 4.7 introducing the new C++ 11 ABI and something about UDEV but I wanted to focus on some issues with GCC. After the most recent sync update, I went ahead and started the update eMERGE world. And as you can see, these, which I'm really not going to go through much of, that's just not the important part, but there were a lot of updates that have happened. Total of 111 packages. There was a use flag update stating that app office a Kanadi dash server needed Soprano added to the update. Now, once again, I've said, as we see these, it is nice to know that I can just go ahead and say, yes, go ahead and add that, which is why I always use the ask um, dash A on my eMERGE, so it always remembers to ask me not just doing it. And then of course we look at this and I installed that and said, yes, that looks good, let's do it. And we did another eMERGE world and it went through of course. And it says, would you like to do this? And then boom, it blew up. Error, app office, Akinani, uh, server, failure, pretend phase. And it says, sorry, but GCC 4.7 and earlier won't work. It's kind of interesting that I get that news article talking about GC 4.7. And in that news article, it pretty much said that you should be okay, but it's not going to work evidently because this blew up. Now, one of the first things I try to do, and this can be very dangerous, but you got to watch and remember what you're doing. Sometimes when there's a vending package, that I'm not quite sure what might be the problem. I'm thinking maybe it needs rebuilt. Maybe there's a conflict with it. I will unmerge that package, which is what I did here. Emerge dash dash unmerge. Akinandi, uh, I'm not sure how to say that. Akinati <laughs> server. <laughs> and I uninstalled it. Now it's trying, of course, to update it to 1.13. And I thought, okay, well, sometimes if you uninstall the offending application, it will rewrite the way the update works and will fix it so it will install it properly. And I was thinking, okay, well, maybe it'll install it properly if we do that. So, of course, that broke a few things with the preserved libs, which I wasn't worried about right now because we're going to fix all this stuff up. We do another eMERGE world on the system, and it comes back and says, okay, yeah, same thing. We're going to try it. It's going to try to install that same program again and blew up so that did not fix it this time so then I looked at what are we running for GCC and I look here and I see okay we're running 4.7.3 now it's saying it cannot compile with 4.7.3 but I'm a little nervous about updating GCC because it can cause some problems so I did some Google searching and I found this forum right here on Gen 2 and if we look at the posted date, it is posted Tuesday, November 18th, which is the same day, this yesterday morning, as it is now uh, early Wednesday morning. And it says the exact same thing that I'm running into. And Akinati server tells me it won't work with GCC 4.7 or earlier. My system has 4.73 and 4.83 
installed. Now, I have not installed 4.83. I only had 4.7.3. So, after reading through this, it gets to the end and says, Thanks for the response. It's just updated to 4.8.3, and everything looks good so far. I decided, all right, let's see if we go back to here, what is the latest version of GCC? So I did here an emerge-s-gcc, and I saw that GCC, if we find it in this list of everything, I think it's closer towards the bone. Here we go. Sysdev GCC. The latest available version is 4.8.3. So sometimes when you do an emerge world, it doesn't install them in the right order. I did a quick lookup on the back end using grept for GCC, and I did find that in that update, it's going to update GCC to 4.8.3, but it was doing it way down in the middle somewhere. Evidently, 4.8.3, if you have not done updates, needs to be updated first. So because of this, I went ahead and did emerge-av GCC, see what it would do, and it says it's going to upgrade it to 4.8.3, old version being 4.7.3, and it's also going to force a reinstall of Python's pillow. It's, that's kind of interesting, but we'll let us let it do that. Uh, we did all of the updates. Now, one thing that we need to make sure that we do after the update is go ahead, and of course, all of this, all the compiling, getting through, getting through, and scroll on down, more compiling, blah, 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 blah. Doing a lot of compiling. Here we go. We're almost towards the end. And there it installs... GCC. Now it's important to notice that at the end of installing GCC, and this is why sometimes you need to really pay attention to things. It's a big program. Yeah. So let me get to the bottom of this real quick. Here we are. The current GCC config appears valid. So, and I'm looking at it right here. So it will not be automatically switched for you. If you would like to switch to the newly installed GCC version, do the following. GCC-config x86-64-pc-linux-gnu-4.8.3 dash dash underscore 64 dash PC dash Linux dash GNU dash 4 .8 Now, if you don't do this and you still try to run Emerge thinking, yep, now I've installed 4.8.3, it will still fail with the same problem. So you must change your GCC config to point to 4.8.3 so it's not using the 473. And then, of course, afterwards, if you're going to do this in the same shell, you need to do the source, etc. profile, or not etc. etc. <laughs> slash etc. profile, to set up and refresh your current profile so it knows in the shell that you're at. Now, the reason why it's important to have seen this is if we get to the end of all the compiling, since it did pillow as well, we back up here. You know, here's the end of the compiling phase right here for Pillow. Here are the messages for GCC. And it talks about if you have issues with packages and able to locate the lib stdc++.la, then try running fixed lib tool files. Uh, major versions like 4.2 to 4.3, please review the update. But there's nothing that mentions anything at all about what we just were told at the beginning. So it's a good thing I saw that. It would have frustrated me because I wouldn't have known exactly. And maybe it does say it here in the upgrading, but in this case, it was good to have seen that. So we still, of course, have the preserved lib libraries that are screwed up because I have not reinstalled the Akinati server. But we go through, there's another news article which I haven't looked at. I tried doing the GCC config as myself and realized, oh, I need write access. I did a sudo. And then, of course, for some reason, I said, okay, well, let's do the sudo for source. And it didn't work. So, source etc profile as the user to get that one working. And once that did, let's see what happens now when I do an a emerge AVU uh, in capital N, capital D world. 
Now, if some of you guys are new and you're wondering what all those are, the dash A means to ask, V for verbose, U for update, the capital N for new use flags, and the capital D to go deep into the world so that it looks for all packages and dependencies that may need updated. So while it searches for that, we will take a quick break so that you're not bored watching a line flash across the screen. Real quick while we are waiting, you will note that it did take about 37 minutes right here to compile GCC, and that is on a uh, Intel Core i7 processor with about 8 gigs of RAM with setting up to compile with 9 cores. So it is a substantially large package that may take you, if you have a slower machine, up to an hour or more to compile. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about doing this update, especially since you'll need to do other things before being able to walk away from it. And that said, I will wait again, pausing for everything to pop up. And here we are. We are back. It only took a few seconds, but to save you that boredom. As you can see, we still have a lot of reinstall, a force update on a lot of stuff. Here, a few new packages. Some, uh, just a few. Ugh, hit the wrong way. A few. Uh, what did I do? There we go. All these things are new, and I think I accidentally closed my, ah, oh, bugger. Let me be right back. <laughs> oh, sometimes these mice get on my nerves. These touch pads. Sometimes I miss the old style mouse. For some reason it bounced somewhere else. Here we are back at the beginning. All this stuff, of course, what we have to minimize this here. Maybe it's the hour. But as you can see, there's a lot of forced reinstalls because of using the new GCC. A lot of stuff here, the following package are causing rebuilds. But we're going to go ahead and say yes. Let's go forward. And if you remember, this is where it was breaking when it would look at App Office and doing these pre merge checks. And as you can see, they are now passing properly and things are compiling correctly. So we will let all of those go through and it should finish correctly and our problem is averted. So in recap of today's little episode, just what I wanted to share was that if you're updating Gen 2 in the next little bit, within the next week or so, and you run into this problem when you do your Emerge World, and you do get some problems with GCC, that it would be best to go ahead and upgrade it to 4.8.3, run the command to make 4.8.3 version the default to compile against, and then go ahead and update your source ETC profile and do your eMerge again. It should repair those problems for you. Now, I have heard that if you do run into some weird problems, there, I don't know, uh, someone in here in the forum, for instance, mentioned that they rebuilt their entire system again, and that sometimes can be a problem when you update to a major difference in the GCC. If we run into those sort of issues, I will let you know in another video. But I really feel from a couple things that I have read that just by updating 4.8.3, you should be safe. It should work out and everything should be fine. Now, this is going to probably take a good four to eight hours, I'm assuming. I did see some pretty large packages like Office. And I know, for instance, when LibreOffice compiles on this system, it can take anywhere between an hour and 45 minutes to two and a half hours depending and that is way too long to sit and wait around for a compilation which why if you notice the time at 15 minutes past midnight 
I will let this run and wake up in the morning and hopefully come to see a clean install of all the updates. So, whether it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for all your support on these Gen 2 in reviews. I hope to try to get at least another review for a distro soon, uh, as next week is in America Thanksgiving, and I will have limited resources to being able to do a review. So I hope to get that out within the next four to seven days for you guys. And then I will be gone again for a little bit because I will be too busy with family and festivities, etc., etc. But thank you very much for all the comments, the subs, everything else. I do hope that these videos are helpful to you. And I hope that they all can find a way somewhere to assist you in fixing one bug or another are just knowing what step to take and always remember the internet search is your friend because you will find a lot of very good answers in the gen 2 repositories like the gen 2 forum that we found this that information is hot off the press and luckily that saved me from having to do a lot of extra research trying to figure out how to fix that even though up front, it seemed quite simple. Updating GCC, however, can sometimes be a little daunting and a, nerve, a little nerve-wracking, especially if there are issues on how it compiles code. For instance, one person mentioned that they went ahead and upgraded to 4.9, and except for it causing segmentation faults in Firefox, it worked great. We will see if 4.8.3 gives us any trouble, but if Gen 2 has made it stable, I'll not guarantee, but I'll be 99.99% .99 sure that it is most likely safe to go to and use. So again, after that long goodbye, I say goodbye again, and thank you. Bye, guys.